Auxiliary and all that they've done. That's uh, almost 80 years now, I think, right after World War II. So, uh, kind of probably our largest mission outreach, even with all the missionaries we have. I think the LWML sends the funds out for most of that to happen. So, we do celebrate that this morning. Uh, Halloween is coming up also since it's October, and we are uh, the trunk or treat planning is in. In work, they were in here Friday morning, or was it Thursday? I think it was Friday, working on that. And uh, if you would like to be a part of that, they are needing more cars. So if your trunk is available, and you'd like to dress it up, well, I wonder if we'll post some pictures because we have some pretty, pretty ima imaginative uh, decorations last year. So if you would like to do that, also, uh, if you'd like to donate a bag or two of candy to hand out to trunk or treaters. Or if you'd like to get a hay bale and bring it to the church for that, and they could use that. We'll also be serving cocoa and, and cupcakes this year. I know last year, I think we had a warm one for lunch, so the cocoa didn't go over. But that means this year, who knows what we'll get. So if you'd like to be a part of that, um, Jolene was working on that. You can talk to her, and she should have uh, most of the details. Uh, we are looking for some people that would like to help. Ronell back there with uh, live streaming and, and Andrew over there. We have two people signed up to do that right now and, and we could use some more. I don't think it's too hard. I could probably almost do it. Okay, piece of cake, she said. Uh, for, if you usually go to 1030 service, I mean, Jake and Heidi, at the, at the 8 o'clock? Well, yeah, we had summer, so most people probably met you. But uh, otherwise, two different services, you walk in and uh, completely strangers, you know. And my dad said that he went to the Saturday evening service instead of his eight o'clock service, and people thought there was a new guy coming home. <laughs> no, we've been members here since '93. So, well, that's what happens when you swap services. But uh, that's good for us. So, if you would like to help with live streaming, talk to Andrew or Renell, and they'd sure be glad to set you up and show you how to do that. And, uh, let's see. 
in Bible class this morning for the adults, we're going to be uh, talking about what is a luther? What does that mean? It started out as a very derogatory term, and, it, and actually in the evangelical world, it kind of still is today, I think, in a lot of ways. People find out you're a luther, and then they ask if you're saved. So, um, but, uh, so we'll talk about that, it's, and a little about the, the books that we we use to show what we believe. And a lot of people think we believe in a book other than the Bible, but that's not true. That book is all full of the Bible verses that show why we believe what we believe. So uh, much more organized than I could ever be, that's for sure. In our prayers this morning, uh, we continue to pray for Carrie and uh, Paul Ness as she uh, continues her fight against cancer, and also for Paulette Amundsen. And uh, Scott is up there this weekend with his mom. So keep her in your prayers as well. Several birthdays this week. It's uh, October's a good month. We have Joshua, Lucas, Krista, uh, Chloe, Adam, Greta, and uh, I think Lori. Sorry, my glasses are carrying me because I highlight things and then I can't read it. So that's what I do. And October anniversary wishes this week to Lee and Pam Isle. I wish them a happy anniversary. Uh, just an FYI, tomorrow and Tuesday, I will be in Mankato at the Fall Pastors Conference. And uh, they, uh, it's kind of interesting, the guest speaker this year just came out with a new book that he's been writing for years on Jeremiah. And so in order to get all the pastors to show up, they are offering that book free when you get there. So if you throw a book in front of a pastor, he's going to go like a dog to a bone. So, that, so I am going. So that will be Monday and Tuesday. Be back in the office Wednesday, and also this morning, you notice we have a, a linen hanging over the altar and a new linen on the communion ware. We also have a new communion cup, and we will be blessing those right before communion this morning, and, and uh, uh, blessing them to be used as sacred uh, articles in, in our church. And sacred means set apart. So we're just we're setting these apart for God's use, and uh, that is the same word used in the Old Testament in Hebrew. That means be holy. So you are to be holy, to be set apart for God's use, just as we set apart these vessels in the same way. And so whenever you see the stuff on the altar or up here, just think about how that has been blessed and set apart for God's use. And that's what's happened with you in baptism. God has set you apart for his own good works. And uh, I believe that's everything. Unless someone else has it. So it'd be tough to do this without Andy.
is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are here. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. And I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I, send me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading 
And the text for this morning's sermon is from Romans chapter 8. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please rise.
came out and said that Jesus was returning last week and that you didn't want to miss it. They misled many tens of thousands of believers, people who don't know their scriptures. All you have to do is look at the last line of the gospel of the message this morning. And Jesus is warning us to stay ready. And he said, you also must be ready. For the Son of Man is coming in an hour. You do not expect. Any teacher or pastor who says they know the time is a false teacher who should be booted from Christianity, or at least from leadership. So you need to know your, your scriptures, brothers and sisters. There are so many false prophets and wolves among us trying to tear the, the body of Christ apart. So just be warned. Now, grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, there's something very powerful and almost sacred about holding someone else's hand. And you can picture that. You can see it in your mind. You can picture a new parent holding the tiny hand of their newborn infant for the very first time as that baby wraps its fingers around them, or its hand around them. Or a teacher holding the hand of this shy kindergartner as, as the teacher leads them into the classroom for the first time. That's almost sacred, it seems like. Uh, a brave teenager who knows he'll be mocked by his friends, but still she reaches down and picks up someone who tripped and fell in the hallway at school. A young but nervous couple holding hands together as they stand before the altar of God to be married. An elderly but very tired man holding on to the hand of his beloved wife of many, many decades. A family holding their hands when they prayed for their meal. And a family holding the hand of a loved one as he or she passes from this life to eternal life. And it was only nine months ago, I got to hold my mom's hand in the hospital as she was preparing to leave this veil of tears and go to her heavenly reward. And I had that privilege of holding her hand for the last time, and it was a truly sacred moment. She was too sick to speak very much, but her hand in mine said everything I needed to know. And today's LWML Sunday, and, and they are a missionary organization of our church that sponsors efforts of reaching people all over the world. And they do that with those little mic boxes, those little, that spare change that they put in there. And it helps more people hear the gospel of Christ around the world than almost anything else. And for decades, the LWML has given that strong witness of how God's love reaches down and holds each of us. In this morning's epistle lesson, the Apostle Paul raises two important questions for us to consider in verse 31. He says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Something that you need to remember in tough times, brothers and sisters. And you notice that in this, the main person, the subject of Paul's uh, focus is God himself. And you see this clearly throughout the text of Romans 8. Sometimes, you see, it's tempting to think that, that our success depends on our grit, on, on our hold on reality, or, or our heroism in the midst of things. It may be so, but it's a very slippery slope in our lives when our dependence slips from God to self-dependence. As Scripture says, thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought. And that can open the door to believing that we are the main people of God's narrative, that we do the things and he needs to answer to us. But the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, gives us a different perspective this morning. He corrects our thinking. He makes it quite clear that God's everlasting love holds us in this life. When we are insufficient, he is all sufficient for us. And because Jesus is for us, because Jesus is with us. We have no fear of condemnation, no matter what is thrown at us. Paul writes, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? What things? Well, Paul has just acknowledged that God has done all things everything necessary for our salvation. And knowing that God has done that, 
How should we respond? Paul continues this way. He says, who shall bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised? Who is at the right hand of God? Who indeed is interceding for us? When you don't think you can pray, when you don't think you can go another step, Christ is at the throne of his Father, praying for you, interceding that the angels will keep you guarded, that the Spirit will strengthen you so that you can make it through no matter what it is you're going through that day. Why did Jesus die? We know that. To pay for our sins. Why was he raised? Well, he died and was raised so that we might live forever. And now Jesus is interceding for us, fully engaged in the battle that wages all around us. Don't you sometimes wish you could be like Elisha when Elijah prayed that his eyes were open so he could see the spiritual battle going on all around him, so he could see the fact that the angels outnumber the demons two to one? There's no way you can lose, brothers and sisters. They are outnumbered. They are out strengthened. There's too much strength in the angels. Corey Tebboom said it this way in her autobiography. There is no pit so deep that God's love is not deeper still. And think about that personally in your own life. What's been going on in your life? Who of us in the past week has been perfect? On the other hand, how many of us have said things we later regretted saying? Or have you spoken to a loved one in a tone that you could take, you wish you could take back? In these past couple years, have you been divisive in any way? I know I have. Yes, to all of the above. Doesn't take a brain surgeon to know that. The law is convicting, you see. And the law convicts because the law shows us exactly where we have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That pit gets pretty deep at times, doesn't it? But as Corey Kennedy said, God's love is deeper still. There's no pit you can dig that Christ's arm won't reach you and pull you out. His arm is long. It's able to rescue us. And indeed, his stretched out arms on the cross of Calvary did indeed rescue us from those pits. Those same arms were made alive as Jesus was raised from the dead. You see, Jesus is for us, and he's with us all the way. And even though Satan wants to accuse and, and condemn you, the action of Jesus is so evident, and the result is clear. We have no fear of condemnation, for Christ is with us. And that leads us to the next major point in Paul's text. Because Jesus is for us and with us, brothers and sisters, we have no fear of separation from God. Every time I get the luggage out to go somewhere, my big, strapping, 80-pound honey dog sticks to me like a pair of Velcro. He knows exactly what's going on, and he starts freaking out and whining. He does not want to be separated. But we don't have that fear with God. Even when we run away from him, when we pack our bags and leave, God sticks to us. There is no separation. He will not leave you. He will not say enough's enough. He will hound you until you come back. That's his promise. Paul continues it this way. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, persecution or famine, nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. Do you feel that way sometimes? Like the world is just running you through? There's nothing you can do? Paul knew what that was like. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, Paul says, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now you notice in that text what Paul does not say. He doesn't say it's going to be easy, does he? He doesn't say Christianity is a walk in the park and that you're going to be blessed every day you walk. 
like other teachers say. That's not what the apostle says. It's not what scripture says. He does not say that life will be free of challenges or difficult circumstances. He does not say that distress or danger will not happen in your life. In fact, he writes in great detail in 2 Corinthians about his own experience in going through those types of challenges in his life. And we know this from our own experiences as well, don't we? We know what life does to even believers. We can each make a list of the struggles of daily living, of the things we struggle to make it through. What would your list look like? What would you include in that list of struggles? Who would you include? Who makes your life miserable? In many ways, you might feel like the deck is stacked against you right now. And in many ways, it is, because we are not of this world. We are of the heavenly realm. When we walk in this sanctuary, we step out of the world. We step into God's embassy. We have one foot in the world, one foot in heaven. And so at times it is tough. People do stack the deck against us. But God has declared you righteous, brothers and sisters. That means perfect. He has declared that you are loved in Jesus. You see, our assurance doesn't come from what the world does to us Christians. Our assurance comes from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's why we focus on Scripture, why we keep our minds bathed in Scripture reading. The Lutheran women in mission have served people for many years whose lives have been out of control. We hear from missionaries and new pastors in, in uh, Africa all the time about how the LWML helped them become Christians because of the love shown to them that their religions never show. In the last year, there's probably been 200 new African pastors that want to friend me. They, I think they friend every Missouri Center pastor. But it's amazing how fast the church is growing over there because missionary work has never stopped because the love of Christ is shown to them. We know this in our own lives. We know that God is in control and by his Holy Spirit, he has chosen to use them, the Missouri Synod, the LWML, and all of us to serve others in love because God is love. So with no fear of condemnation or separation, we come to the final point this morning. Because Jesus is for us and with us, we have the certainty of victory. We know how the battle ends. It's already over. We've won through Christ. The victory is made yours personally through the gift of holy baptism. St. Paul says this in Romans 6. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was, was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too, you and me, might walk in newness of life. You see, baptism equals victory. Victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil. As Paul says, we are more than conquerors. We are the victors. One of my mighty hymns, and probably one of yours if you've been a Lutheran for any time, says it well in verse 2 of the Mighty Fortress. And I love how Luther wrote this. No strength of ours can match his might. We would be lost, rejected. But now a champion comes to fight, whom God himself elected. You ask who this may be? The Lord of hosts is he. Christ Jesus, mighty Lord, God's only Son, adored. He holds the field victorious. It's a picture of a general on his white horse who has conquered anyone who dared stand against him. He holds that field, and they have all bowed to the new general, to the king. That's Christ. Every knee shall bow. You see, brothers and sisters, our victory is not secure because of our hope on Jesus, but by his hold on us. We are more than conquerors because he holds tightly to us. Therefore, we can live every day, including today, confidently trusting that God will deliver us. And as a baptized child of God, I urge you, remain in his word. Be reminded of your identity as a victorious one in Christ Jesus. Rely on his grace. How have you been saved? by grace through faith, and respond to his call. Just like Isaiah the prophet, may we all enthusiastically respond, here am I, send me, 
Send the meeting over. The people of our synod, of our denomination, and in fact, people all over the world owe a debt of gratitude to the LWML for the hearts and the hands that have so willingly shared the gospel with people all over the world. May that example today remind us and encourage us also to share the joys of Jesus with everyone that we run into. May our God continue to hold us in his love, the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. It is now time for the morning offering that we give back to the Lord that which he has already given us. Please rise. And at this time in the service, let us all uh, speak the LWML pledge together <laughs> to see what they're doing and to encourage us also in our own walk with God. In fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have, and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest field. We pledge him our willing service wherever and wherever he has in the We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every hour of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the heir into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your goodness and love in Christ that sustains us each day. We praise you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is for us and with us in all things. We thank you for the Holy Spirit, our comforter and sustainer of faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide, we pray, our congregation and our life together and witness in the world. Grant us your grace and strengthen your people through the word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the mission of the Lutheran Women's Missionary League in this congregation and throughout the world, that each person involved will see opportunities to be salt and light to their neighbors and through various opportunities for mission. Through the faithful gathering of minds, may Lutheran women in mission continue to encourage us to put all you have given us into the mission of reaching the lost. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sanctify our homes with your presence, reminding us that nothing can separate us from your love. Unite the members of all families in love towards you and each other. Be with all those whom we lift to you in prayer this morning. Touch them, heal them, and let them know that you will never leave them or forsake them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
beloved in the Lord, in perfect love for us, Jesus Christ, our God and Lord, became incarnate, died and rose for our sake. He bestows the benefits of his redeeming work on us as he places his body and blood into our mouths in the sacrament of the altar. It is therefore fitting and right that these vessels and linen used to convey to us his body and blood should be sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Psalm 34 and Psalm 116 remind us, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you, we pray. Most gracious God and Father, whose only begotten Son instituted the blessed sacrament of his body and blood, bless these linens and this cup for use at the altar of your church. Grant that all who eat and drink the body and blood, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ from these vessels may rejoice in the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Give them to them in this sacrament. Through the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless these items and all who receive the life-giving sacrament. Amen.
our God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Thank you. 